Okay, so morning. My name is Miguel, I'm delivery manager for the BOPS uh, back end office for planning systems. And I'm welcoming you to the first uh, show and tell of this sprint. Uh, this is being a recorded session, so you all know. So if you don't wish to appear on camera, just uh, please switch your cameras off. And with that, I'll pass you over to our excellent team and uh, product owner, Tom Buttrick. Over to you, Tom. Thank you, Miguel. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first show and tell of this next phase of product development for BOPS, um, a new back office planning system for local planning authorities to determine planning applications. Now, we would normally stream this live on YouTube, but due to the pre-election period for the London mayoral elections, um, we've recorded it and we'll post it to YouTube after the elections, which is uh, uh, not long now, uh, it's about a week or so away. Um, as Miguel said, I'm one of the product owners here at uh, Southwark Council for BOPS, where we're working with our partner Burroughs and our delivery partner Unboxed to develop the tool. Um, for those who don't know about BOPS, um, it's a new software application it's designed by and for local planning authorities. Um, and BOPS will process planning applications in a more efficient way, a more intuitive way, so planning officers uh, can make decisions quicker and use less resources. Um, the users of BOPS are planning officers who process these applications and the managers who will sign them off. So where are we? Um, the, this new phase of development um, will look at, um, I guess, three primary objectives. Um, based on all the work we've done already, um, we um, will be taking the Lawful Development Certificate MVP through to private and public beta testing, where we'll be working with our colleagues in the Reducing Invalid Planning Applications team to provide the applications through to BOPS to determine. And we'll be using live Lawful Development Certificate applications. So we'll be super excited about that, putting the product into the wild to, to test how it goes. So that's um, one of the key objectives. Secondly, um, is householder applications. As we all know, local planning authorities um, process thousands of planning, uh, sorry, thousands of householder planning applications every year. So we have been, uh, we've started um, building on the work we did in previous uh, phases of development. But we've started to look at the functions that householder applications will need within the tool. And we uh, will be demonstrating some of that today. Um, the third uh, sort of objective is our wider program of work for the BOPS project. Um, that's working again with our partners um, to um, look at um, how we can um, take BOPS forward, looking at the barriers to adoption with councils, looking at the market, looking at contract lengths, etc. So we'll be doing uh, some of that. So moving on, what have we been doing this sprint? So the, the theme for this sprint um, over the last two weeks has, um, has been around uh, broadly validation. As we know, a planning application comes through uh, to BOPS and we have to check that it is valid. Um, and as we know, as planning officers, if it is invalid, we then have to request changes from the applicant. Um, and so we've been looking at how we request changes. Um, also, um, we've been looking at further functionality uh, for the uh, Lawful Development Certificate MVP, um, which is adding uh, a location of hand to the decision notice, and we'll demo that shortly. Um, we've been looking at, um, with that, as I mentioned, with the, the, the requesting, requesting changes to the application, um, we've initially looked at how we can update the description of development um, that's proposed. Um, and looking at how we can potentially, uh, looking in terms of design, how we've, um, how we've um, uh, request a new document. Another thing that we've been doing, which has actually been really interesting, um, is actually looking at, at it was, as this is a new phase of development, it's an opportunity to um, kind of take a step back and look at the overall product of BOPS and really kind of um, question and, and, and re-look at what, what is the functionality? What are we, is it capturing everything, all the opportunity that this tool could do? So we, we've had a number of sessions with, with partners um, over the past couple of weeks. And we've, we've, ha we've had a, 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 a good opportunity to, to look at that. What else could this tool do? And um, we've called that a development strategy for, for BOPS. And um, we'll, we will go through that 
a bit today, but also through over the next uh, sprints and, and describe that further. So moving on, um, we touched on validation, uh, which as we know is an incredibly important part of the, the determining the application process. And we can only determine the planning applica application once it is valid. So having the functionality in BOPS to ensure that we can tell an applicant that the application is invalid and receive information back, i.e. a new description or a new plan, is an important part and BOPS needs to do this. Um, the benefit of BOPS doing this um, is that the issue, the, the, the invalid issues are tracked and resolved within BOPS itself. Um, it doesn't go out you know, the applicant, sorry, the case officer isn't using their Outlook to send emails back and forth. It's all caught within the, it's all delivered through this, through BOPS as a single system. And what that means is if the, the case is reassigned to a different case officer, um, there's a clear kind of audit trail, a visible um, audit trail, um, and um, which, which shows what's been done um, in terms of the processes and the reasons why it's invalid. And we'll demo some of that today. So that that request for change, that that functionality of a case officer asking somebody else, be it the applicant in this instance, for further information, um, can be utilised, or that functionality can be utilised in the, in a number of points within the uh, the process. Um, we could do it for changes of description, it could be for replacement documents, it could be for a new document, it could be the red line of the um, planning application uh, boundary is incorrect, or for example, we could also request additional payments or, or refund payments. So there's a this one key piece of functionality has many different uses. And so by developing it firstly for, um, for one uh, use, we can then apply it to um, these different uses. I'm going to hand over to James now, um, and he's going to talk um, you through the process of how this works. James. Hello. So I'm James Darling. I'm the um, tech lead on this project. Um, so, yeah, as Tom was mentioning, there's a sort of to and, to and fro going on between the applicant and the, the planning officer. Um, particularly in this process, um, we have that first step of case officer requesting a change. So that's them letting themselves know, recording that, letting the other planning officers know, but then also um, letting the applicant know. So sending an email off to the applicant from the email address they provided. Um, and we want to provide the applicant with a unique link that they're able to click on, see all of the requests for changes that have been made, uh, that have been made for them and their application. And they're able to there and then um, uh, make those change you know either accept that change so if it's just the planning officer saying I want to make this change they can just say yes or no if they say no give a reason why not or it might be like uploading a document um, or in the future you know making some more payments etc etc um, and then they submit that and then it's all automatically updated in BOPS so if they have say yes we want that um, planning description that description to be updated, then we can just automatically update that, put that in the audit log that that was done. Everyone's happy, um, and it's all been, uh, you know, it's not happening in, in in emails that get lost. It's not getting, you know, uh, yeah, it's all there in the audit log, etc. Next slide, please. So this um, this is a very nice sort of end to end process, but we need to think about how we architect that. Um, and there's sort of two ways that they could go. Like we could we could start building, you know, make bops bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, um, which is not something that we really want to do. Sort of what's called the monolith um, and make bops huge. Um, uh, we want to keep bops to be um, just about the back office planning system as it is in the name. Um, but what we have here is is a sort of new section of the applicant interface. Now there are um, it's obviously work that RIP is doing and then there's planning portal already there and there's other early work around the SMPA. Um, and so BOPS will need to talk to these applicant interfaces and have a to and, th to and th uh, throw uh, through what we call like an application interface. Um, now, we're sort of in the early stages of designing this process. Um, 
So we want to build our own sort of prototype applicant interface. Ideally, this will, will never go live. Um, we want to build this, build this so that we get that, that, that um, API spec built right and we can use a test and see how that flow works. And then we'll have the API in a way that Ripper and Planning Portal or any other um, applicant interface can use that same API and provide that. that. So box maintains small, uh, councils can choose whether they're using Ripper, Planning Portal, et cetera, et cetera, any, anything that will can support that applicant, um, applicant to and fro with that feature. Um, and then in the future, we'll have something similar with the other side around the consult consultation interface. So we might build a little prototype one there um, and hopefully other um, applications will be built supporting that API. Hope that makes sense. Next slide. So I'm now going to pass over to Melissa, I believe. So yeah. just to give a, give a quick bit of context, that's all a lot of thinking. We've done a lot of thinking. We've done a lot of work. There's a lot of design work that's happened. Um, in terms of what we've actually developed in this thing, I'm, I'm quite quite pleased that we have actually developed some features in this short short period, since we've had a lot of that thinking. Um, so what we're going to have is we're going to have Melissa um, describe that small amount of development that we've done, and then we can talk about the larger design work. And now I can pass over to Melissa. <laughs> Thanks, James. <clears throat> so I'm one of the developers on the Bob's project. And um, in this phase, in theme with the validation, we started by looking at how we could make documents uh, more easily to identify as valid or invalid. Um, so it's you can now add that feature and you are forced to add a comment if you mark it as invalid, right? You have to add a justification, which doesn't happen if the, you just mark the document as valid as usual. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now, the other feature was the request for change. Uh, as, we've, as James has already mentioned, we've worked on the part where the case officer is now able to create a request for change of description type. Uh, we haven't plugged this in yet to sending an email to the user and um, to taking the user to a new application where they can reply to the request for change. So in this phase, we focused on the, what the case officer sees and uh, Tom will showcase this feature later on when he does the, the live demo. Next slide, please. And now I'm handing over to the lovely Rianne. Hi, um, I'm Rianne. I'm one of the I'm, I'm one of the other developers on the project. And um, this sprint, we've been work, extending some previous work that we did around the red line location plan, um, which is displayed from the geographical coordinates that are sent with the application. So um, obviously, it's a requirement to have this um, red line plan on the decision notice. So what we implemented this sprint is the ability for the case officer to preview how it looks um, before they um, submit to the planning manager for determination. And um, this exact view will be output on the decision notice which the applicant receives. And um, Tom will demo this a little bit later on. I think I'll hand over to Ali now. Next slide. Thank you, Ryan. Um, yeah, so I'm the designer and researcher on the project. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're going to be developing um, in the next sprint. So the design work that I've done this sprint to be developed next sprint. Um, so we've been looking at um, expanding the kind of like change requests. So no longer just looking at um, confirming changes to the description, but also having the ability to replace a document if it's invalid or request a new document. So um, as Melissa kind of, uh, as Melissa mentioned, you can mark each individual document as invalid and then um, add a comment. Um, and those comments and invalid documents will be pulled through um, to your change request. So it just means that as a planning officer, if I have um, 15 or 20 documents, I don't need to mark outside of BOPS on a separate document which documents are invalid. Um, the system automatically remembers that and pulls that through. Um, and it just allows me yeah, then to send that request over to the applicant. Um, next slide, please. So then um, as the view as the applicant, um, 
uh, I will get like an email sent to me with this unique uh, link that James mentioned. Um, and then I can go on and follow it through and I can see exactly what I have to do. Um, and I get a kind of a list of actions. So that could be just one um, description change or I could have multiple replacement documents or just one new document to replace. Um, and each of these are kind of like individual actions um, that you can, um, once they've been completed, you can then submit that um, and it's automatically updated into BOPS. Um, so we can, yeah, automatically update, um, uh, replace a document. You can up upload that from here. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'm now gonna pass back over to Tom to do some uh, a demo of these features that we've developed. Thank you, Ali. I'm just going to uh, just swap screens so we can um, show the demo. So just one second. Um, I'd like colleagues in the room if they can just confirm they can they can see the, the demo. Now I just need to give a warning that there is a lag between audio and video when we start the demoing of the tool. So if I jump ahead and the screen is a little bit delayed, I do apologize. I'll try and minimize that as, as much as possible. Um, so thank you to um, Ali and Rianne and Melissa and James there just to kind of describing the features that have been developed. And we're, I mean, as a planner, this is super exciting to see and um, uh, in, improving that kind of ability of a case officer to um, uh, uh, engage and receive um, information to validate documents is, is just, is, it's great to see. It's, it's, it's a step change to what we do now. So we're looking forward to showing what we've got already, but then developing that further functionality. So I'm going to demo um, some of the ac actions uh, that's been uh, delivered this sprint. So I'm just going to log in as a case officer. And I can now see my uh, list of applications. And the first feature I'm going to demo is the, um, the red line plan on the decision notice. So I'm gonna come down here to um, a, uh, an application uh, for a, uh, an LDC. Um, I am going to quickly conf uh, just check the documents that the application is valid. And I'll just let it catch up. And hopefully you can see the, the application uh, documents there. And I'm just going to confirm that I want the document on the decision notice. I'm going to give it a reference, plan number one. Hopefully you'll see that appear. And I'm going to save, um, save that document. That's Great. I'm going to return back to the planning application where all the planning application detail is, is, is held. I'm just going to jump back to validation. And I'm in this instance, we're going to confirm the application is valid. So I will click on save. And we can confirm the application is valid. I will now um, assess the application um, as the case officer. And for the purposes of this demonstration, it is gonna be lawful. So I will click on yes, the use, uh, the, sorry, the operation or the, the development is, is lawful. It meets the, the regs. Um, I, in the box here where I state the reasons, I would usually type a, a, a nice long reason referencing each of the uh, parts of the regulations. Um, but in this instance, I'm going to say the application meets the regulations, etc. Excuse the typing. Um, and just to, a note to my manager, yes. And I'm now going to click on save. So I am now going to submit the recommendation to my manager. I've done my job. I will click on submit my recommendation. And we can see the draft decision notice. And here um, we can see the uh, red line plan uh, in, uh, in the decision notice here. And so that functionality is there. Um, I'm conscious of time, um, so I won't show the, um, the, the, the finished PDF um, of when the decision notice um, is included in the final decision notice PDF, um, but the PDF is created and the manager issues it and that's, that's, on the, um, that's there. 
So that's that um, functionality. Um, I'm just going to jump over to um, a different planning application, and I'm just going to illustrate um, the um, the functionality around um, the, the emerging fun functionality around um, changing the description because the applicant has put the wrong description on. So um, maybe not this one actually because it looks like the validation is already completed. Let me just find a different application. Um, I'll just look at this one here. I'll validate. So hopefully the screen's caught up. I'll validate the application. Um, and no, the application isn't valid. And I need the reason why is the description is incorrect. I've, I've recognized that. So I'm going to click on a new request. Now, this is what would be is going to be sent to the applicant to, to change the description. And I'm going to recommend a new description. Um, it's um, a it's a rear extension, not a chimney stack. So th that has been received by BOPS. Um, the functionality would then push that out to the applicant as as Ali just um, showed you in the design phase is that's what that will then will look like and, and that functionality is built next sprint. But the applicant, uh, sorry, the case officer can see um, a, ref, a record here of the request for a, for the change, the previous description and the suggested description. So and that that's been sent, and we can see that the request has been sent, and that would be received back from the applicant. So that's a, a really um, key piece of functionality, um, and that functionality will be echoed for for want of a better term across different functions within the tool. That back and forth within uh, between the case officer and the applicant uh, to um, to get um, various bits of information, be it plans or similar. So um, let me see. What I'm going to do, I'm just conscious of time, and we do have a couple more slides to get through. So I think if I pause the, the demo there, um, there is the, the other part, which was um, uh, you have to add an email address um, to, to submit a planning application through BOPS. But I think. Um, yeah, we 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 can we can um, we can either save that for another time or just to confirm that that's there. So I'm just going to jump back to the um, to the the uh, presentation. Okay, and um, hopefully, can you confirm the room? You can see that presentation. Great, thank you. So, what's next for Sprint Two? Um, as we've discussed in this this um, this show and tell, there's there's lots of foot. Um, we're super excited to be to be developing this functionality for requests for change. So we're going to be looking at um, in terms of product development, we're going to be looking at uploading replacement files, plans um, or similar, uploading new files. Um, in terms of design, we're going to be looking at um, editing the red line within the um, within the um, within the tool and we're also going to be looking at payments. Um, we've also um, spent a lot of time, as we said, looking at, uh, at the beginning, there's a, around what can BOPS do? What, what else, what other functionality would be great? When we've done research with, with planning officers, what, how are they using their current system? How are they using spreadsheets to manage their caseload, to understand that? So we, we're really interested in um, looking at that improved functionality within BOPS. And we use, we're using the term considerations here um, for part of this. And considerations is are all those things that the case officer will do to consider the application. It could be a planning constraint. It could be a contextual issue. Um, it could be um, uh, many, many different things. But by recognizing what those considerations are, we can then develop functionality based on those um, moving forward. So for example, if we recognize that um, there's an issue around a, hist a start, there's a heritage asset which um, comes into play. The the case officer could ID flag that, and actually we know the bots will then know that it needs to then potentially at some stage involve a, a heritage uh, or conservation officer. That's just an, a brief example, but considerations is um, is something where we're going. So watch this space, and we're looking forward to explaining more about that um, in the forthcoming sprints. Um, 
as ever, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you're a planning officer, um, we, we welcome opportunities to increase our testing pool. If you'd like demos, do get in touch with myself and, and Peter uh, Forrest, who's our, our, the other product owner here at, um, at Southwark. Um, so do get in touch. We have our email addresses there and you can catch us on Twitter as well. We're a bit silent on Twitter as, as at the moment because of the pre-election period, but we'll be uh, back in the swing of that once as soon as we can. And um, that's the, uh, the end of the demo. We'd like to thank you all uh, for watching this video. Um, I'd like to thank the team uh, for, for being part of the show and tell today. Uh, so thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Tom. So uh, as you all know, we'll be back in two weeks time on the 13th of May. We'll look forward to uh, presenting uh, further things then. Bye now.